Hello everybody! So if you are here, you are probably brand new to Maya. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up the program. And because I have both Autodesk Mudbox and Maya on my computer, I have to be careful that I open up the right program. As you can see, the icons are very similar. And now that I have Maya open, I'm going to suggest that you go to Workspace up in the upper right corner and make sure that you have Maya Classic selected. In addition, to make sure that what you see is like what I see, you can go and reset the current workspace. I'll be going over Maya's interface in more detail in a later video. For now, we'll keep it simple. What I'd like you to take a look at is the shelf in Maya. Notice that I can change what is displayed on my shelf by clicking on the various tabs. We in fact want poly modeling. And by clicking on the cube icon, a cube will be created at the origin of my world space. In fact, if you look on the right side of Maya's user interface, you'll find the channel box. And with my cube selected, you'll notice that its translate X, Y, and Z are set to zero. That is because my cube was created at the origin of the world space. To navigate in 3D space in Maya, you will need a three-button mouse. Holding down the Alt key on my keyboard, along with the left mouse button, allows me to rotate my view. And holding down the Alt key on your keyboard and the middle mouse button will allow you to pan your view. And finally, the Alt plus right mouse button will allow you to zoom in and zoom out with your camera. Another way that you can zoom in and out with your camera is using the middle mouse button as a scroll wheel. In summary, to navigate in Maya using a three button mouse, Alt plus the left mouse button will rotate your view, Alt and the middle mouse button will pan the view, Alt right mouse button will zoom the view, the scroll wheel will also zoom the view. This would be a good time to pause the video and practice these very important skills. Up to this point, we have been moving the camera. Now let's try moving the cube itself. On the left side of our user interface, or UI, you will find the toolbox. This is where you will find the tools for selecting and moving your objects. The button at the top is for selecting. With that tool selected, if I click anywhere in my viewport, it deselects the cube. If I click on the cube again, it selects it. The fourth button from the top is the Move tool. Notice that if I hold my mouse over the button, it actually indicates what the tool does. To use the Move tool, I'm going to place my cursor on the handle while pressing and holding down the left mouse button. It will then drag my mouse, which will move the cube. Grabbing the green arrow will move the cube in its y-axis, or up and down. The blue arrow will move the cube on its z-axis, or backwards and forwards. In fact, if you take a look at the channel box on the right side, you'll notice that the translate x, y, and z values change when I move the cube on these various axes. By grabbing the arrows, you are moving your object in only one axis at a time. If I wish to move the cube in two axes at once, for instance, on the Y and the X, what I can do is I can grab the plane. Notice that in the channel box I am now moving it on two different axes at once, the X and the Y. And if I grab the handle in the middle, I can move it in all three axes at once. I don't typically recommend doing that. 
because it can be quite unpredictable. Notice that I can also change the placement by just putting in values in the channel box itself. Now I've set the translate x, y, and z back to zero, placing the cube back at the origin. And if I wish to undo that last action, I can simply click on Control z Sometimes when navigating in 3D space, you might find that you lose yourself. By pressing F on my keyboard, it will zoom my view into the object I currently have selected. Let's move on to the Rotate tool. Notice that when I select the Rotate tool, the handle for the tool changes to indicate that the object can now be rotated. Once again, I'm using my left mouse button while dragging the handles. Also notice that I'm only rotating one handle at a time. I generally recommend only rotating objects on one axis at a time. And notice that I can also input exact values in the channel box to rotate my cube. While you can rotate an object in all three axes at once, as I'm doing here, I generally don't recommend that because it really doesn't give you the fine control that you're going to want. And now let's move on to the scale tool. When I select the tool, notice that once again the handle for it changes. If I grab the yellow box in the middle and left mouse drag, I can uniformly scale this cube smaller or bigger. And if I grab the green handle and left mouse drag, I can non-uniformly scale my cube, making it taller and thinner. By grabbing the individual handles and doing non-uniform scales, you can really change the shape of your objects. Notice that if I return to my channel box and I set the scale X, Y, and Z to 1, my object will become a perfect cube once again. Let's try creating a couple other polygon primitives. Returning to my shelf and going to the Poly Modeling tab, I'm going to select the Sphere icon, which will create a sphere once again in the origin of my world space. I'm going to scale this sphere down, and then I'm going to try to place it on top of my cube. While this task is not particularly difficult, uh, using the perspective viewport, as I'm doing now, makes the task a bit tedious. There is, in fact, a better way. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to go ahead and put the sphere back at the origin. In other words, back at its translate x, y, and z of 0. I'll do this by inputting the value in the channel box. Let's take a look at the Quick Layout Outliner buttons. By clicking on the second button, I can change my viewport from a perspective view to four different viewports. Now I still have my perspective view, but I also have a top view, a front view, and a side view. Notice that in my perspective view I can still do all the different three button mouse operations to navigate in my 3D space. I can also pan and zoom in my top viewport, however, I cannot rotate it. The top, front, and side viewports are what are called orthographic views. They are not intended to be rotated. 
By working in my orthographic views, I can much more exactly, much more precisely place my objects in my 3D environment. When you work in 3D, you will find yourself constantly changing from viewport to viewport, from your perspective viewport to your various orthographic viewports. I can return to my quick layout outliner buttons and by clicking the top button quickly put it back to the perspective view. There's a quicker and easier way to do this, however, and that is by using the space bar on your keyboard. By placing my cursor in the desired viewport and then tapping the space bar, I can quickly and easily change between views. Let's take a look at a few more polygon primitives that we can find in the shelf. Besides the sphere and the cube, which we've already taken a look at, we can create a cylinder. a cone, a torus, and a plane. I recommend practicing navigating in Maya using your three-button mouse, creating lots of different polygon primitives, and using the Select, Move, Rotate, and Scale tools to adjust these polygon primitives. I'm going to show you one more way to look at our 3D scene. The fourth button in our Quick Layout Outliner buttons will open what is called the Outliner. In the Outliner, we'll see all the objects that are in our scene. For instance, the perspective, top, front, and side cameras that are associated with our four different viewports, as well as all of the polygon primitives that I have created. Notice that I can actually select these objects in the outliner itself. As your Maya scenes get more and more complicated, you will find that the outliner is an indispensable tool. Let's say that I want to save my Maya scene so that I can work on it again later. I'm going to go to File, Save Scene As. I will give my Maya file a name. And I'll save it. If I want to start a new Maya file, I can simply go to File, new scene, and start with a brand new empty scene. Later on, when I want to open up my original scene, I'll go to File, Open Scene, select it, and open it. Here's a quick little composition I created using all the tools and techniques I have shown you up to this point. Before concluding this video, I'd like to show you just a couple things that have sometimes confused beginning students. In my viewport menu, under the icons of my viewport, I can change between a wireframe and a shaded mode. Also, by pressing 4 on your keyboard, you will change to wireframe, and 5 will switch it back to shaded mode. Another problem that students sometimes find themselves in is that they accidentally get into what is called component mode. We'll be going over component mode in a later video. Components simply refer to the parts of an object. And just like the object itself, the parts can also be moved. For now, please avoid working in component mode. If you find yourself accidentally in component mode, what you can do is you can click on the Select by Object Type button. This will put your polygon primitive back into object mode. An even easier way to exit component mode is to press the F8 key on your keyboard.
In conclusion, here are some of the topics that we covered in this video. And thank you for watching.